And how did you find me out? Where did you? So welcome to another awesome episode where I have a really incredible soul and I'm as excited to hear her story as much as I'm guessing you are for, for clicking on this episode. So today we have Joanna Bonanza and essentially her story is telling of her journey from contracting HIV to coming back to the beautiful health that she embodies these days. So I like I have so many questions before I even begin to introduce her. So I think I'm just going to start with a little bit of um, housekeeping to let you know who Joanna is. So she's a health coach with a holistic approach and she's dedicated to empower you to reclaim your health freedom. Um, I guess her story has helped her become more aware of her mission in life. Like most of us, we come from a pain point or a struggle or some sort of traumatic situation where that catalyzes us to want to share our, our greater mission to more people so that we can, we can use our story for good. Um, so she helps you learn to master your emotions and trust your intuition um, and helps you change your health and life from not the outside in, but the inside out. So with that, Joanna, do you want to come in and say a beautiful hello in your beautiful accent and speak from your story and why you do the work you do today? Hello, Lauren. Thank you for having me. Um, actually, one thing that it's... Uh, that I didn't knew back then, I just knew this last year, is, and I don't know if you have heard of it, it's that HIV, it's a hoax. And I really oh. thought it was, uh, uh -huh. I really thought that back then I had a very contagious disease and that it was very dangerous and I had to take pills in order to be healthy. But, but uh, Last year, I saw some documentaries and everything started to click. I was asking questions, I was searching, I was seeing interviews, I was seeing documentaries. And for me, it was such a ha-ha moment. And now I know that viruses are exosomes. They're not contagious, they're not dangerous, they're just produced by our own body. They're like little vesicles to remove toxicity and debris from the cells. So this is really just, so we have all been brainwashed in, into living in fear. Interesting. And I can share documentaries with you if you want. They are really eye-opening and yes. everything started, yeah, so everything started to click because before, Nothing made sense. I believed the doctors because I've learned since I was a child that doctors knew about health, mm. but it didn't make any sense. And for example, before I started taking the medication, I, I didn't have any symptoms. I was uh, 18, I was healthy, I was full of energy, I was doing sports. And as soon as I start taking the medication, I started having lots of side effects. My hair started to fall a lot. It started turning white. I was always feeling nausea, fatigued. I, I had uh, my rib cage increased like 10 centimeters. It's like about five inch, I guess. Wow. And my toenails started to fall off. I had uh, from, I would go to bed and I was perfect uh, when I would, wake up in the morning I would have like a, like if I had a wound suddenly and this happened several times and back then I didn't know what it was I felt it that it was the medication but I didn't know what it was and so I talked to the doctor I said I'm having all these side effects all this crazy thing and the doctor told me oh it has nothing to do with the medication now I know that it has all to do with the medication because I have read the, the, the insert and all the symptoms were there. 
And besides, do you know that, um, for example, on my first cocktail, I was taking three different um, antiretrovirals, and one of them was AZT, which was actually the first one to be approved to treat HIV and AIDS. And those chemicals, that's chemotherapy. They call it antiretrovirals, but in fact, it's chemotherapy. And that's why the side effects, it's very clear for me now. Joanna, can you just back it up a little bit in terms of you're an eight, you're a healthy lady up until this point where you were taking the medications, but, but what was, where was that part in between that you actually were diagnosed with this and prescribed medications? So I was 18 and my boyfriend at the time, he told me that he had uh, made a test and the test came positive. So uh, I went, I did the test and they immediately send you to a specialist. And the craziest thing is they don't even give you the test. And the test shows up positive for everything. If you had a tetanus shot, if you had the flu shot, if you had flu, if you had contact with someone with tuberculosis, if you had it, it's it's such a big list i can send you the list as well Please. because it's incredible it's incredible and people are being labeled with something which is a totally fraud and worst you, doctors are telling you now you have to take these pills otherwise you're going to die and you believe it and that it's such um like a curse which mm. is the hardest thing to come to overcome it's harder to unbelieve something that you're told, right? Like, you know, and, it, and this is why the placebo effect is so effective in areas of like, you know, they could say, oh, this is going to heal this new, you, you know, you couldn't have had this disease, but you'd be like, oh, well, this is healing my body. And there'll be some sort of healing effect going on as you're taking it. But the detriment that it's caused to your, your body and your health for even just having that diagnosed in general I, like how are they getting to these how are they getting to these conclusions in their results like or is it just literally made up actually the virus has never been proven to to be uh, it was never isolated so oh. they say if you see the documentaries it will be mind-blowing because you'll see the scientists saying Probably this is HIV. It's like probably, and you are telling people that they're going to die. It's unbelievable. Even if someone had something, for example, like a cancer, why would you say that the person has six months to live? We all are diff We are all different. Each one of us is a unique human being, and you ha we have a, a unique way of feeling and living life, and what we do how we feel it's all it all contributes to it so it doesn't make a lot of sense to say someone you have this time to live why would it be people uh, in my opinion they could say okay this is what we have and now let's search for the best possibilities what can you do what can you change in your life how's your lifestyle how are your habits all those things, relationships are a very important part. And when we see someone with a white coat that we are used to give, to think about them as authority, mm -hmm. I think that they should be even more careful in what they say because it can be very traumatic. Definitely. That is really beautifully said. And it just makes me think of everything happening with COVID as well, like in terms of... It's the same. It's the same thing. It's the fear response. And, you know, it's giving these almost unrealistic um, uh, data, I guess, or outcomes from things of like someone could die of heart disease, but they, but they get deemed as dying from COVID, not dying with COVID. And it, it just, it, it blows my mind how the people in charge of, of the results are, um, can they've got so much power and it's a bit like reading something in a newspaper or, or something you just take it for fact and once you read that or hear 
news from somebody who's in authority, it's very hard to unbelieve that. Um, like, even though you logically might know it's, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's exactly that. You believe it, you trust it, and you accept it. Totally. And then, for example, for me, the hardest part to, let me rewind, from HIV to health, the name of my website, mm. is from going to a mentality and a state of being, of feeling, from victimization, from fearful, from disempowered, to empowerment, to freedom, to ownership and full responsibility. That's the main, that's why the name is it. But, I love that. Uh, <laughs> and so the goal is really to share my experience and help people overcome the, the, the challenge that they're facing. Because when you are labeled, labeled with some kind of disease, which people say that it's contagious and dangerous and that uh, for example I used to feel that I was a danger to the world I was dangerous to other people that uh, I shouldn't be alive and all those things that uh, state of mind is challenging to to overcome and for me what really helped me the most is to follow my intuition mm -hmm. to really connect with what I was feeling and also to do to meditate and to do EFT. I don't know if you have heard about it, EFT or tapping, where we tap on certain meridian points. Yes. And that heal, really helps to calm down and reprogram our mind and go from a state of fear to a state of sadness and then calm. It really helps to process all those things. And that's when we are living in fear, it's not possible for us to trust our intuition because we are not able to listen to it. And sometimes even like going outside and gardening and petting a dog, all those things are great to calm down and really help us align with our intuition, which is very helpful. It's a great point that you bring up in terms of when we're operating out of fear, we're in our sympathetic nervous system. So we're operating from, from needing to feel secure and we're, you know, we're protecting ourselves. So when you think of emotions and, and things in general happening with an equal push and pull, if you're in fear, it's like it's very hard to, you know, even feel love or to feel um excitement so I, I see emotions as like a spectrum that they're not one or the other but it's just at one end you've got like excitement and at one end you've got fear and so if you're right at the extreme of like ah I don't know what to do I can't actually feel like I'm safe in my environment like of course you're not going to know um how to feel joy and and want to smile and all of that because you're just instinct like instinctively trying to protect yourself you are in survival mode. Yeah, totally. That's it. Have, did you have a plan like when you were 18, like before all of this happened? When, you know, did you see yourself going somewhere or was this life mission almost thrust upon you? Because I feel like you would have a level of gratitude towards the circumstance happening in a way to have pushed you into an area of a life mission that is so valuable to other people. Like you're, I'm, I know that you would be helping so many other people in this area. Well, when I was 18, I really didn't know what I wanted to do in my life. All I knew was that I like to, to move. I like to do sports and nature always made sense to me. So if I would uh, eat something, I would feel if it was the best for me or not. But I didn't have any goal or any plan. I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I felt it like it didn't, I didn't know that it exists, for example, coach. I didn't, I wasn't aware of it. So, but what I felt it from the moment when I, when I received a positive test is that that was my mission. 
I didn't know how, but I knew that I was going to overcome it because I, I saw in my mind, I saw like a, a vision in my mind where I was sharing my story with other people and I didn't know how I was going to make it or how I was going to do it. And I was feeling quite lost at that time. But as, uh, and I took the meditation, uh, the medication for 12 years. Wow. And uh, for example, my jaw, even yesterday I was looking at one of my pictures from my travel lessons and my jaw was so swollen. So, so, so everything was painful. I didn't have any energy. My hair was falling. My stomach was bloated, all those things. And um, what helped me to reconnect with my, my intuition, because I've always been very intuitive, but uh, because I was listening to others and I was doing what others were telling me that it was the, the right thing to do, I was shutting down the connection. And when I started to, I was gardening a lot. I would spend my whole afternoon gardening. I was meditating a lot, like two, three hours med meditating. And that really helped me to start reconnecting with myself again, with my intuition. And then when I was taking the, the pills, when I was taking the medication, I started to hear in my mind that it was time for me to follow another path. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. going crazy. <laughs> because for me, it was really outside the box. I, I really felt the, the effect of the medication. Mm -hmm. And I felt that my body was shutting down. But I didn't know anything else. So it was a bit scary. But every time that I took the, the pills for a whole month, I would hear every time the same thing in my head that it was time for me to follow a different path and that it was time for me to quit medita medication. And I was like, okay. So for a whole month, I just felt, so, so I was like trying to figure out how I feel about it. And if I, when I took the pills, I would feel like a zing, just like something was off play. Mm -hmm. And when I thought about stopping the pills, it was like a peace and a calm and space. And then it, I came up to the moment where I was like, okay, I have to do it. And so I followed my intuition. And I started to, and I thought, okay, I have to do something to empower myself, to reclaim my health and to take care of myself. Because in the beginning, I even thought about uh, like doing a partnership with a doctor because I thought that she knew more and that it could be helpful for myself. But basically, I went there after stopping the medication. I went there two more times and she would tell me the entire time of the appointment. She would be telling me that I was going to die in just a few months. And after that, yeah. And seven years have gone by, so, and she would tell me that I was going to die in a couple of months and that my blood test would be awful and that they weren't. And then she would say, oh, okay, so you have probably one year at the most to live. And she will, we even had like conversations, like uh, almost three hours conversations with another doctor. And Basically, we were them saying, or you either do this, either you take the pills or don't come back. So I knew that I couldn't take the pills. So I just had to be there for myself. And I started to research and I saw lots of documentaries, interviews, summits, everything that I could get my hands on, I would see like a, a liver summit, a lymphatic, um, a lymphatic massage, all those things. Mm. And so I learned lots of things and I would follow my intuition. For example, if I had a rash, if the, a rash would pop up, then what I would do is instead of getting scared, I would take a deep breath and was like, what can I do? Why, why is it happening and what can I do? 
And then I would have an idea, essential oils. I would have an idea, lymphatic massage. So I would go and follow it. And I would learn, I would do it, I would implement it on myself. And I would see how, how, how I reacted. And it's amazing because with all those little things that happen, I, I learned so much. And now I really feel that if, uh, feel and I believe and it has been my experience as well that when we have what we call a disease it's just the body being poisoned the body has the, the main sources of um, like what we call disease of symptoms symptoms are in fact a message and if the body is sending a message is because there's something that is not right we are dealing with toxicity, which can be several kinds of toxicity. For example, the water that we drink, it can be polluted. The, um, the food that we have, uh, it can have heavy metals. Um, the um, tox emotional toxicity, that is a very big one. What we see on the news, what we see on our Facebook or social media, because if we see something, we can start having panic attacks. We start living in fight or flight response. And in that, uh, when we are feeling like that, when we are feeling fearful, it's very hard to align with uh, solutions, to see, to have ideas, to see opportunities and really take hold of them. And that's uh, when we are dealing with toxicity or lack of nutrition, of course, symptoms are going to appear. It's like, like having a car and instead of giving it like diesel, putting orange juice in the car. It's not going to work properly. It's not going, to, it's not made for it. And that's the same when we are not respecting ourselves with our relationships. For example, for me to stop going to the doctor was the best thing that I did besides stopping the medication. Because it wasn't, I do believe that relationships should be empowering. People should respect, even when we don't understand. It's my health, it's my body. Of course, I want to be healthy. Otherwise, why would I make or would I be doing it? I love that you mentioned pain is a signal. So instead of, of seeing pain as like a really negative thing, it's like it's actually your body's way of showing you that something isn't right but like secondary to that as well is it sounds like you've been on a journey of it's taking you through trusting your intuition again so do you know what I mean like and it's like that's probably the gift it's given you right from the beginning to go like how why did I stay with this for 12 years like what the actual and this is the bigger meaning of life of how people just so radically accept where they are or what they have and go oh well this is just what it'll be because um I guess that's what everyone else has been saying or what the doctors have been saying it's like be your own investigator be more excited about your story than anybody because the doctors they have their own lives they're just paid for their job and I'm not saying they don't care about you but there's certainly different ways to approaching health and I know particularly back in the day they probably would have been operating well out of fear for certain words even you know like HIV would have red flagged them like COVID would these days and they'd just be going over cautiously as opposed to hey like if disease like my viewpoint is if disease has occurred naturally in the body why can I not find a natural solution out like unless it's something, you know, like your legs cut off or something, then there's surgery and then there's certain things, you know, medication that they can help you with for pain. But other than that, I just, I love that your, your passion is to start to clear the toxicity from the inside out because that is how we start to heal diseases or dis-ease naturally um, from you know, like disease doesn't happen for no reason. If everything's good and um, life is flowing, usually our bodies feel good, our mind feels good, we're breathing well. But if you're unwell, the whole 
body and the whole system just shuts down. Like your body feels achy and sore. You don't breathe properly. You're not thinking well. And then you have people telling you that you're unwell. So there's, there's so many factors in this, like language and intuition. And um, I'm so proud of you for taking on an alternate route because that would have been quite challenging. Well, if I kept on taking the medication, I wouldn't be here because everything was really shutting down. Yeah. So, and what happened is before I started the medication, I was healthy. After I started the medication, everything started coming down because that's, for example, AZT is one of the most toxic drugs that was ever made. Yeah. And why for everything that we have there's always a natural solution mm -hmm. that has less or no side effects and that our bodies are able to deal with it for example if you drink fresh made orange juice if it's too if for any reason it's too much vitamin c for you the body will flush it down it's okay mm. there's no problem but if it's a chemical uh, allopathic medicine uses the chemicals that they use. They come from petroleum. So do I need to eat that? I guess not. I like to eat apples. I like to eat seeds. I like to eat uh, vegetables. But not something that comes from petroleum. It doesn't make any sense. And what happens is that it just shuts down parts of the body. It's uh, instead of improving in we should be cleansing, identifying the root cause of the discomfort mm. and then cleansing it, helping the body to detox, helping the body do what it's supposed to do and what naturally does. He knows how to do it. And that's what uh, has become my mission to support my body, my mind, my what I feel, my emotions and help to identify the root cause of the symptoms, the pain. For example, sometimes we are having throat, um, throat pain. And it's just because we are not expressing ourselves. We are not saying what we want to say. Mm. That's one of the main reasons for pain. We are having like a, a ear pain. And it's because we are listening to some people that we cannot avoid. And our body starts to shut down. And instead of giving, uh, taking a pill, for example, you can start questioning your, ourselves. We can really ask, what is it that I don't want to hear? What is it that I don't want to see? It's actually, it's quite simple. When we, when we look deeply at it, it's quite simple. It's just respect ourselves. I found, I, I just remembered what I was going to say there because um, you were just saying then like your body shuts down, but I actually think it's waking up. It's showing you like, hey, I'm screaming. I need something else here or this is a signal. And it's a bit like you were saying um, people test positive in things. And I'm like, isn't that paradoxical language? Like, wouldn't we test? negative because it's like we we say positive because it's a yes we've got it but it's like not a it's not a good positive so it gives this really interesting mixed message of like yeah just say hi, hiv positive covid positive um the only probably positive test if you're planning for anything would be a baby and it, it coming back as positive do you know what i mean but other than that like mm -hmm. it's a really interesting um language use there that they that they spin on it um so I, yeah i always just get caught up in all of that kind of stuff i find it so fascinating did you know that for example if you had a tetanus shot i always hated needles so this just kept in my mind because mm -hmm. whenever i was able to miss a shot for me it was great and when i was a kid i was supposed to have the tetanus shot but when I went there and they told me that I was, they were going to make an antibody test 
to see if I had antibodies. It was because I was um, protected and I didn't need the shot. Mm -hmm. And that kept here in my mind. And do you know that when you test for HIV, it we, and it doesn't test for HIV, it tests for a whole different thing. But the test that they say, it tests for antibodies. And if you have antibodies, it means that you have a positive test so that you have the disease. But even when we think about it in scientific terms, it doesn't make any sense. Why does it work in another way for all the other disease? And why it works differently for, for this one? It doesn't make any sense. It's so crazy. <laughs> Is, I'm sure you've done this this posture many times. Like, mm -hmm. like if, if and people I've are listening to this, yes. <laughs> because I was taking the medication. Doctors were telling me that it was antiheterovirals. In fact, it's chemotherapy. I was being poisoned. So that has a huge effect on your mind, yeah, for sure. How, how did your body respond coming off the medication? Like how long oh. did that take? As soon as I start, stopped the medication, I felt more energy. My body was bloated. It started to, to release. And everything started to, to improve, even my hair, all those things. Yeah. And... But it wasn't, uh, I, I, uh, we searched for so long for natural ways of treating HIV because I thought that I, it was a virus. Yeah. And, but I couldn't find anything. It was really strange. I couldn't find any natural summits or nothing. And the only thing that I was able to connect with was with cancer. I felt it like seeing lots and lots of summits about cancer and was like, I don't have cancer. Why am I seeing this? And then I, when I saw the documentaries and I realized that antihetrovirals are chemotherapy, it made all the sense because in those summits, I was learning how to detox from that and what I could do nutritionally. And so it makes a lot of sense. And um, where was I? Ah, and so basically, no, I got it. <laughs> basically, it was just these two years, this past couple of years, these two years that I started to realize that what I had to do is to detox my body, help my body detox mm -hmm. and improve nutrition because I was already improving my nutrition. I was eating lots of raw foods, superfoods, seeds, berries, lots of herbal teas. Uh, for example, uh, I use ze zeolite, uh, what else, essential oils, all those things. But it was, was only in this couple of years, these two years, that I realized that it really, I, I really had to detox my body, help my body to cleanse. And for, because, for example, when my rib cage increased like 10 centimeters, it was my liver, my spleen, my kidneys, everything was so toxic. So it was so. Have you interestingly gone back yeah. to get um, like medical results or have you completely steered clear from there and just gone, I'm going all intuition. I feel great. And I'm just going off that. Yeah, that's exactly. I've never come back to doctors yeah. and I felt that it was harmful to me. First of all, I hate needles. For me, blood tests are like a very stressful moment. I have mm -hmm. to force myself to do it. So the stress from it all alone, it's a lot. Then uh, I'm not going to a doctor that's going to look at me like you're going to die. Everything that you are doing is wrong. Yeah. And the third thing is, I feel like when, when I was taking the medication, I was looking for outside validation. I was looking for approval from society. And now, actually, not. And I feel much, much better when I'm not looking for validation outside of myself. We all know when we are feeling good, when things are working well for us. For example, when we eat a very 
a heavy meal full of uh, sugar and um, gluten and all those things, we feel it in our body. We don't have energy. We are, our belly gets bloated. We get constipated, all those things. And when we eat like fruits, raw fruits and veggies and we drink water, all those things, we feel great. So we know the, the difference and we know where to go. And for me to go to a doctor that has, that don't believe in what I'm doing, that sees himself or herself as I'm the authority and you are doing everything wrong. For me, it doesn't make any sense. And now that I know that the tests are bogus, they don't test for anything that they say. The, for example, someone that is healthy can have a CD4, which are the, the white lobes, a CD4 count that can be low, but the person can be healthy. And the reverse can be true as well. And for example, your CD4 can count can change a lot in the same day if you are stressed or if you are calm. So Have I don't you... see the need. Oh, I was, I'm just so curious because I'm sure that like with, with the title of your website and, and the message that you put out there, it's almost a way of getting people with that same story drawn in and to go like, Hey, this is my story. Have you shared a similar one? And do the people that come to you often have that background story of like, hey, I was diagnosed with this and I found that I've come off the medication and I'm much healthier? Is that, is that sort of your mission? Yes, that is my mission. Okay. And I've been talking with a lot of people, which is great because people really share their story. Yeah. And... Uh, there's lots of people that are still taking medication and they are afraid of leaving the medication or stopping the medication because doctors really tell people if you stop the medication, you're going to get sick and you're going to end up on a hospital. They told me many times. And so people are afraid. And everyone, I really believe that each one of us should be responsible for ourselves. Yeah. And what I'm what I'm here for is to help people to release fear and connect with their intuition. And when people are connected with their intuition, they know what to do. There's no question. They don't have to ask anyone else. They don't have to ask me. I'm just here to help them release the fear. Those, all those thoughts, all those beliefs, HIV is a, a virus, uh, HIV is contagious. If I, I have to take the medication, if I stop the medication, I'll be sick, I'll end up in a hospital. All those things are very, very uh, strong beliefs. And what I'm here to do is really help people overcome it, release those fears, reprogram our, our minds. And of course, the, the nutritional part, the lifestyle habits, all those things, all those things are very important. But the most important thing is how we feel and what we believe. That's for sure the most important. Because otherwise you can, I'll just do it in a second. Otherwise, if you are drinking all the right things, all the juices, the green smoothies, if you are eating everything right, if you are doing yoga, you are meditating, but if you are living in stress, if you are living always in, with the, in the back of your mind, the thing, I'm going to die, maybe it's better to take care of it. <laughs> you have just eloquently put that all together because really, like to conclude this, the our beliefs are our biggest, our beliefs are our, our reality. So yes. you chose to approach that with meditation and finding another way. But if you believe that you're going to die in six months, your body is going to start preparing you for that. So we can think ourselves sick and we can think ourselves well. And I know that might sound woo-woo to some people, but it's so true. Like what everything that is our reality is something that we've believed. It's like we either believe our success or lack of, we believe in our skills or we don't, um, you know, like we believe in what we eat is healthy and that has a positive 
way that it influences our body or we go, oh, this ice cream's really bad, your body's probably going to absorb it in a way that it's holding on to toxicity. Um, and, you know, there's certain levels of spirituality that cannot always be directly measured by science, but this side of intuition it an experience in a field enough I think we've heard it from too many people not to just not to try to dig a little bit deeper into your own story don't just take something off the shelf don't just take a piece of opinion and go oh well they seem really professional and amazing and I've trusted them my whole life so I'll continue to trust them if it doesn't feel right for you or you want another outcome like reach out to somebody like Joanna these are the sort of people that she helps to move through those belief um, blocks and helps you reframe your mindset and if anyone like gosh who how would have you responded to not you Joanna but the people listening and watching if you were diagnosed with HIV like I'm not sure how I would have responded to that to have achieved the same outcome so where can people find you to um to tell their story or to get um support from you what's what's the best modality for them to reach out uh people can go to my website which is from hiv to health and they can contact me through the through my email they have like a contact form and i will personally reply they can get to me on social media facebook um, uh, gap linkedin miwi and but for sure i would love to hear your story that for the people that are listening to and i would love to help you reconnect with yourself and release fear overcome those limiting beliefs and really the the goal is the final goal is for people to be independent for people to be able to make their own search and follow their intuition but we all know that sometimes we need help when we are living in fear and we don't know how to get out of it and that's what i'm here for i'm here to help people empower themselves it's like I'm guiding them step by step. They don't have to do all the research that I did all those those years. It's faster. It's uh, and when we have someone that believes in us and that supports us and helps us find solutions, it's much easier. And that's what I really love to do: help people, to help empower people, and reclaim their health. And it's amazing. If, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you won't be able to see her beautiful face, but you can probably hear in her voice that she just lights up when she talks about empowering and, and serving people. And it's such, a, it's such a beautiful quality. And I think the first thing that captivated me when we went on to this call is just your, your big smile and, and like to still have this level of passion after all of the, the struggle and the challenge um that you've gone through is such it's such a gift like you you are such a beautiful soul um so before we before we do close out I will just get you to give a recommendation of um a book or a podcast or something that you find extremely valuable it can be it can be health related or it can be completely random Ooh, oh, I'm reading a great book right now. Uh, what's the exact name? Uh, what the doctors don't tell you, I guess. Uh, I don't have it here. It's okay. But it's from Lyne, what's her name? McTuggar, I guess. Lyne McTuggar. What doctors don't tell you? I what think doctors that's don't the tell name. you? I think that's the name of it. Yeah. And it's a big book, but it's really word reading because it exposes for example x-rays they are radiation um blood tests they don't they they are not as extra accurate sorry as people think for example my blood tests back then when i was taking the medication 
it seemed that everything was okay. But I was, I didn't, for example, my liver seemed that it was okay. But I had no energy. I was feeling totally exhausted after meals. And all those things are signs that it isn't proper. It isn't okay. Yeah. So, and that book really exposes all those things. It's a great book to read, especially now. <laughs> it's very suitable. I'll add that onto the show notes along with um, Joanna's details. So if you didn't quite catch it with the audio, I've got all of that in the, the brief little show notes. So whether you're on YouTube or on Spotify, you'll be able to click on that. Um, and if for some reason you can't find her, just reach out to me and I'll put you in contact with her. So. Thank you so much, Joanna, for joining me this evening here for me and this morning there for you. I've, I've absolutely loved connecting, hearing your story and absorbing all the value that you have dished out in this relatively short session. It was a pleasure, Lauren. Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you back on to... Um, as well recap all of the the little programs that you're doing at the moment just to kind of check in and see and see how you're going and how all of your um yeah all of your missions are going as well so we'll have a little encore of Joanna coming back whether it's later this year or sometime um next year but we'll leave it to sometime in the future <laughs> it will be a pleasure Lauren. thank Amazing. you so much <laughs>